They are at the post, and they're off in the 2010 Hoover Stake. Very quick start for No Garlic, who springs right out and takes the lead a length and a half from Ranger Rob second. We begin with the Juveniles. The first race of the year was the July 10th Hoover at River Downs. It was over soon after it began. No Garlic, a Zeba Graham homebred, took the lead at the break and won as he pleased. Third. Inside the final furlong, it's still the favorite. No Garlic to catch. Rockwell Tory, Ranger Rob starting something, then McSwab, but the Hoover Stakes goes to No Garlic. No Garlic remains undefeated to win on the wire by two and a half. Rockwell Tory second. Blazing Meadows' starting something was a filly chasing the boys when fourth in the Hoover. The July 24th Tada was a ladies only affair and she was on her game. The performance was definitely the start of something big. And uh, they're off in the 20th running of the Cleveland Kindergarten Stakes. And along the inside, No Garlic is joined early by Ranger Bob. Ranger Bob will take over. No Garlic is now in second. It's With three consecutive show finishes, Ranger Rob was stuck in third gear heading into the August 7th Cleveland Kindergarten. The Mr. and Mrs. Jeffrey Jackson homebred quickly shifted into first, posting the easiest of victories in the six furlong dash. Going at it into the final furlong, and mid is Ranger Bob, who's going the better, and Ranger Bob now opens up by five, six lengths. Ranger Bob will score in the Cleveland Kindergarten Stake. And uh, they're off in the 43rd running of the Miss Ohio Stakes. Not a good beginning for the four Flopsy, but it is a good start there on the inside. By throws it down and throws it down. Now has them by three parts of a length. Starting something, cooling her heels since winning the Tada, went back to work on August 21st in Thistledown's Miss Ohio. The pageant was a walkover. Starting something, one off by six lengths. And it's starting something who has them now by three lengths. Trying to come back in second as throws it down, but edge of the toe board and this one's all. Starting something and starting something takes the Miss Ohio. And they're off. In the 43rd running of the Juvenile Stakes and no garlic, very alert right from the start. Looks to lead him by Old Glory for the first time. Hold. The Juvenile was up next, and as impressive as starting something was, a maiden son of medalist took to the Thistledown Strip like he owned it. Say hello to Jump Boots. They're into the stretch, and they're drive for the wire, and it's Jump Boots, the leader. Wild Bling is trying to fight back. Jump Boots getting rank on the lead, but maintaining a four-length advantage with a 16th to go, and it's Jump Boots who will take it. Jump Boots to win the Juvenile Stakes. Jump Boots by six. And they're off in the 19th running of the John W. Galbraith. And it's Lady Ten Pens who tries to hard for the lead. So is starting something along the inside B Cryptic. The state's leading freshmen were at Thistledown on October 2nd for the Juvenile and John Galbraith Memorial. $75,000 appetizers for the best of Ohio races. 
the Phillies are up first and starting something continued her total domination of the Distaff division, winning as she pleased. Into their final 16th and starting something is pouring it on. And it's starting something who has them here. Starting something is finishing it here. Starting something wins the John W. Galbraith. Following Best of Ohio Day, just two stakes remained for Buckeye two-year-olds. They were won by horses with familiar names. Starting something in what is believed to be an Ohio fun first won the October 23rd Glacial Princess at Beulah. It gave her a sweep of all four stakes for Phillies. This final victory was won for the books. Only one rival showed up at the starting gate to oppose Ohio's Princess in Waiting. The November 13th Ohio freshman completed the juvenile stake schedule and No Garlic, who won the Hoover in July, was still at his best. Three rivals tried him in a betting exhibition, but were easily dusted. Next up are the Buckeye Sophomores. Beulah Park's March 27th Royal North kicked off the eight race series and Correct Call lived up to her name. Claimed for $50,000 the previous summer, she made her Buckeye debut a memorable one. Correct Call doggedly on the front end. Ohio Star can't reach Correct Call. Correct Call of the Royal North Stakes. That's a heck of a cat. Ohio's juvenile champion of 2009 picked up where he left off the previous fall by winning his 2010 debut, the April 10th Howard B. Noon in Ebula. The victory kept the whole that Tiger Colt unbeaten in four career starts. Correct call. A bargain on the main track after being claimed and winning the Royal North became a great buy on the turf as well. Proof? Her driving score in the May 15th Tomboy at River Downs. The OTBO doesn't offer a trophy for the state's best grass horse. If it did, Busha would be a leading candidate. Riverdowns' May 29th green carpet handicap was Busha's first added money start on the lawn. Despite a rough trip, the son of Mercer Mill was along in time. It wouldn't be the last time he'd celebrate a stake's triumph 
on the lawn. Keep the money in the family? That's what Festive Girl had on her mind when she went to the post in the June 27th Cincinnati and at River Downs. By splashing to victory, she joined her kid brother, No Garlic, winner of the Hoover, in the Buckeye Black Type Winner Circle. Both Zeba Graham homebreds are by Habib out of the Piker Mare Yellow Springs. They're off in the 43rd running of the Cleveland Gold Cup. And as they pass the stands for the first time, going out there looking for the lead, that's almighty O. The sign of a good horse is one who rebounds from adversity. That's a heck of a cat, an uncomfortable sixth in the green carpet, put that first career defeat behind him by showing his class in the July 3rd $75,000 Cleveland Gold Cup at Thistledown. That's a heck of a cat, turns first. Far outside, where's the limit, trying to close. Bouchard from between them, a 16th to go. That's a heck of a cat, almost home. He needs the line, it's that's a heck of a cat, and what a cat he is. That's a heck of a cat, wins by almost two. And they're off in the 2010 Queen City Oaks. Excellent beginning for Country Club Shoe from down on the inside, and she'll reach out to take the early lead, Golden Girl. Hard to load, hard to beat. Squeezer's Palace, a Gary Aiken homebred, racing in partnership with trainer Tim Ham, was a handful behind the starting gate prior to the July 17th Queen City Oaks at River Downs. Once the gates opened, it was her rivals that felt out of sorts. Squeezer's Palace was the easiest of winners. Squeezer's Palace to the attack on the outside in second. These two in a thrilling Queen City Oaks. On the outside, Squeezer's Palace up for a short lead. Back to second is correct call. It's a distance to a dream for Darlene, but the daughter of Mock Squeezer. Squeezer's Palace for Tim Ham and Jason Lumpkin score in the Queen City Oaks to win on the wire by two. Busha, winner of the green carpet, cut a little more grass in Cincinnati. Riding the rail and the hedge to perfection, he lived up to the name of the stable that owns him, wire to wire, going wire to wire, in the July 31st Horizon Stakes. <laughs> 